Our first scripture passage comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. Hear these words. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. And now, our gospel reading for this Easter Sunday. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord for God's people today. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly... There was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is a going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious, holy, and loving God, we thank you and praise you for this word and for this Resurrection Sunday. O oh Lord, as we contemplate the stories of the resurrection, speak to our hearts anew. Speak your love to our lives anew. And in all of this, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite Tina Turner songs is What's Love Got to Do With It? That was the title, in fact, of a movie and musical about her life. In the song, Tina Turner questions the reality and efficacy of love. She, in fact, calls it but a second-hand emotion. Of course, Tina Turner had struggles in her own life with love. The lack of love she experienced as a victim of intimate partner violence would have led anyone to question what love had to do with that. How many people in this world do you think feel this way? How many are abused by the very people who are supposed to love them? How many are without love and lonely? How many grieve great love loss through separation, divorce, or death? How many question the reality and efficacy of love? 
and how many people question the reality and efficacy of the communal love of our society in a world full of racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, divisiveness, and violence. How many people wonder, like Tina Turner did, what love has to do with any of it? The people of Israel must have had these questions. Indeed, in our first scripture passage from Jeremiah 31, the people to whom Jeremiah spoke were people who had endured war and atrocity. They were a people who had been beaten down and defeated. Yet the message that God sent them through Jeremiah was not a message of hopelessness and defeat. It was not a message of abandonment and lovelessness. It was instead a message about God's faithfulness and love. God tells them through the prophet, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will build you and you shall be built. God was promising to love them with a love that was eternal. This love was grounded in God's covenantal relationship with Israel. No matter what happened in their lives, God would build them up and they would be built. No matter what happened, God would love them. This is the story that the whole of Scripture tells. Out of great love, God created, and though human beings sinned, God still redeemed and saved. Indeed, out of God's great love for all the world, God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and lived among us. The witnesses of Jesus Christ's whole life and ministry was a witness to love. God so loved that he healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, advocated on behalf of the least, and declared that they would be first in the kingdom of God. Don't you see in Jesus the continuation of God's promise in Jeremiah? I will build you up and you shall be built. I will love you with an everlasting love. Friends, Jesus loved us with his life. This whole progression of Holy Week, beginning last Sunday with Palm Sunday, we have been reliving and rehearsing and re-experiencing the stories of Jesus' love. Out of an everlasting love in our, our behalf, Jesus sacrificed his life. He could have turned back from the cross, but he did not because he had chosen to love us with his life. And that is, friends... That is the reason that we are looking today at Matthew 28. That decision to love us with his life brings us to this resurrection account in Matthew. In this gospel account, Jesus has been crucified. He has died and has been buried in a tomb. And two women come to the tomb to mourn. But they are met by an angel, and the text says that the angel rolls back the stone. Now, friends, I don't think it was the angel's great might or some kind of magic that moved that stone. I believe that it was the love of God that rolled back the stone, the love of God expressed at creation, the love of God expressed to an Israelite people in exile, the everlasting love, the promised love, the faithful love of God for God's people. This was the love of God that lived in the person of Jesus Christ, who was crucified, dead, and buried, but on the third day rose from the dead. This was a resurrected love of God in Jesus that rolled back that stone. What are the stones in your lives? What are the stones that sit up on your hearts? A sudden and inexplicable illness? Struggles in a relationship? Financial insecurity? Struggles in school or on your job? The loss of a loved one? What are the stones that sit upon the heart of our nation and our world right now? Yet another mass shooting? 
Rising racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, and homophobia, rise in violence and extremism, climate change, war. Whatever the stones we face, they are not too heavy for the love of the resurrected Christ. Jesus can and will roll back the stones in our lives. Now, I don't mean to be Pollyannish. I'm not preaching some kind of health and wealth gospel that claims that all will be well all the time. What I am saying is that the stone that covered that tomb did not let in any light or air or a possibility. That stone was supposed to be the final word against life and love and hope. But friends, the stone did not have the final word. The resurrection had the final word. And the message of the resurrection is that there will be, despite the tragedy and hardship in our lives, God will be there and Jesus will roll back the stone. The message of the resurrection is that we will never be without struggle, but God's love will always be there to hold us up. We will never be without illness and death, but we will not have to face those things without the possibility and hope of resurrection and new life. There is, friends, but one response to the reality of the hope of the resurrection offered through Jesus Christ. It is the response of the women in this gospel story. Because you see, these women had been witnesses to the horror of the crucifixion. They had had some stones in their lives. And they came to the tomb, and the angel rolled back the stone. And God's love spoke to their hearts with possibility and with hope. Christ had risen from the dead. The angel told them to go and tell that story. And the women leave with joy. They shout from the rooftops. No matter the stones in our lives, Christ has risen. Christ has risen from the dead. He is no longer in the tomb. God's great love in Jesus has rolled back all the stones of hopelessness and despair and lovelessness in the lives of God's people. Christ has risen from the dead. The witness of these women is a witness of joy because that is the only response to the love of God made real in our lives through Christ. It is to witness with joy. And when we respond to the resurrection story with joy and witness as they did, then God meets us in Jesus on the way, just like Jesus met them. And we are compelled to do what these women did. We are compelled to fall to our knees and worship him. Now, Waki, I know that you have had some stones in the life of this congregation. With more than 150 years of ministry, this church has had to have had to deal with some stones. But God has rolled back the stones. When you first wanted to build and you raised money, but then a recession hit, God needed to roll back some stones. And God did, God's love did. It was because of God's love and faithfulness that you did not give up. You were able to raise the money, to buy the land, to get through the ups and downs of building this church. And now you find yourself in a new building on Resurrection Sunday on Easter. And we all know that this is more than a building. This is a center for ministry. This is a site for worship. Through this building and the ministries and worship, it will allow others will come to know the everlasting love of God in Jesus Christ. Through the ministry and the worship that happens here, others will experience the redemptive love of Jesus. And whatever 
whatever sense of lovelessness and hopelessness and despair they have in their lives, God's love will roll it all back. Indeed, we claim this Easter that God's promises in Jeremiah and the Gospels have been fulfilled. God has built you up into the strong body of Christ. You have been built. God has loved you with an everlasting love. God's love has rolled back the stones in your lives. That's the message of the resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. God's love has rolled back every stone because Christ has risen in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.